you doing? Welcome back. My name's Phil. Welcome to the channel. It's been a while, so I thought I'd just do a little uh, video, catch up on a few thoughts. Um, as you just saw in the clip, I've been doing some gigs recently, and after I finished doing the gig, I wrote down a bit of a brain dump on what worked well, what didn't work well, and it occurred to me that I've made a bunch of changes intentionally which i thought might be interesting to see for some folks um and also it's a kind of a journal for me to look back on in the future so if you look in the the first video this one is from last may april time something like that whenever Fetter the music was uh, world music day um i'll put the date up on the screen and when i did that that was a bit of an experiment that was the first time i'd ever played solo <clears throat> and as you can see uh it was all a bit cobbled together so it worked and it was perfect and as an experiment it was great um it served its purpose, it entertained some people, it got me a gig, um, and it was it was good, I really enjoyed it. Um, but if you look at the, the setup that I had, it can take a lot of improvement, especially if I want to do it more and get better and be more professional. So little things like the... Um, so the speaker that I played through was my home speaker, uh, which is a party speaker and we have it on uh, our terrace when we have parties and stuff. So it's big and loud, but it's not, it's not gig worthy. Uh, and so I upgraded to a, a PA, which I'll show you in this next video. And the table that I had my laptop and my launch pad on, that was a, a little table that used to be in my daughter's bedroom. So... Again, it served a purpose. It was perfectly sized. I wasn't really bothered about what it looked like, but we have a lot of chateaus around here and I want to be doing more gigs in chateaus. And so playing on a little teenage girl's pink table is not the most, <laughs> it's not the, the, the most pro uh, look in the world. So I got a new desk, which is again, you can see in this next video in this next clip um pretty much from may i got my set together for the gig last week i figured out what i wanted to do figured out my vibe that i wanted to go for so i'd had a few months of practice and this was going to be my first full length solo gig. The Fet de la Music one was, I don't know, 30 minutes. The one I did last week was two and a quarter hours, just me. So that's the longest I've played on my own, live, ever. It's one of the longest gigs I've done in my life. Um, not the longest, but it's, it's definitely up there. Um, and it went really well because I'd rehearsed and I'd played through the tunes and I'd become comfortable with how to improvise over them and I'd given myself permission to make mistakes and not learn any specific tune, but I had a vibe in mind for each for each tune, so it, it left me pretty free to play what I want. So the whole gig was was improvised. Um, which is what I do, right? I don't, I don't read off any sheet music. I don't prepare any notes. The tunes are kind of similar each time I play them because you know they are what they are, um, and that's fine. But the the actual notation that I'm playing on my trumpet, that's that's different. That's all improvised in the moment that I'm playing it. So every time I play a tune, it's it's different. If I did the same set list. At another pub tomorrow it would sound completely different it would sound broadly the same because the backing tracks are the same and some of the phrases that i play will be the same but 
other than that, it's it's a unique improvisation each time. It's like free improvisation is live composition um, without writing it down, and you you play it at the same time. So think about it like I'm live composing and playing at the same time. Um, so I'm kind of bypassing the part where you write it down, you put it on sheet music and you stand it in front of you and you learn it. I'm, I'm feeling it, I'm hearing it and I'm playing it all at the same time. So composing, live performing, it's all the same thing for me. So that was the first one. Uh, the music, the fact that I knew it was was good. Um, the next one was, uh, was the gear, which I've already talked about. So we won't go through that again. The music itself, So that was a good selection. So I went specifically for background music. I went for background chilled jazz and blues and jazz house. So some bits had a bit of a beat with it. Some bit was pure 12 bar blues. Some bit was just pure straight jazz. Um, not traditional jazz in the Miles Davis, John Coltrane sense of the, the word, but just more jazz than anything else. Um, and part of what I wanted to set out to do was to play background music and, and do it well. So there is a, there is an art in playing background music. Anybody can stand in the corner of a room and play music. That's not, that's not difficult, but playing in the corner of a busy bar. So this does the bar that I played in. And you'll see in one of the clips, it was full. It's only a small bar. There was probably, I don't know, 60, 70 people in it, something like that. Um, and and everybody was eating. Um, it was curry night, so everybody was eating their curry. There was waiters coming in. There was people meeting each other. There was just general bar conversation, you know, that ambient kind of noise that you get in a, in a, a bar with loads of atmosphere. And so, and I was in one corner, I was at one end of the, of the bar. So part of the art of playing background music is being able to blend into the background. You're there, but you're not there, right? It isn't a gig where people are coming to see you and they're standing in a crowd or even sitting in a crowd looking at you and you've got to entertain them. It's not that sort of a gig. It's... It's a live version of pressing play on a Spotify playlist in your bar, basically. And so part of the art of doing that is playing loud enough so that people can hear you, but not too loud so that they have to strain to talk. Um, and I've been playing a long time and so I've, and I've been practicing that specific mode of playing for, for years um, and become quite proficient at it. And so, so I've become good at blending into the background, playing music that entertains people, that sounds good, but nonetheless, which is still there, and people can go about their night. So there was people who were just having conversations. Some people said to me afterwards, they were kind of confused when the music stopped in between tunes and they looked up and they realised that I was there playing live because they thought it was a CD. Um, and they were, or they thought it was a, a, a playlist on Spotify or whatever. Um, and obviously you put a, a, a playlist on Spotify or an album on Spotify, it doesn't stop, it just keeps on going. <clears throat> so they were, they were stopping, they're like, ooh, stop the music. And then they realise it's me in the corner and they're like, ooh, musician, you know, clap, applause, cheers, whatever. Um, but they've got this music in their in their ears while they're while they're eating and and you know like I'm looking around and there's people bobbing their heads and tapping their feet and a few people dancing at the end and stuff. So so it had the desired effect. So the the, the live background music that I wanted to aim for. That part of it worked perfectly. Uh, I I don't think that could have gone any better. And the the PA. So I've got this Maui Five. Um, PA, which I'll do another video of some point. It's by LD. Um, if I just move this around here, you can see it there in the corner, this big tower thing. 
Um, let me put you back down there like that. Anyway, so the so the, so w upgrading from the speaker that I used on the last gig to this Maui Five made a massive difference and enabled me to do the background music and do it well because I could just keep turning my volume up on the PA as the ambient noise of the bar went up. So as the night goes on, people drink more booze, they're having a better time, they're more excited. So the, the noise in the bar of the people's voices and stuff just increases. So I just need to just keep notching up a touch on the on the PA and it, and it took it, it ate it up, no problem. The next thing was was my playing. Um, this was this was the be best part about it for me. So the first half I played for an hour, pretty much non-stop. I had a few breaks for having a drink and resting my lips, and I had a microphone, so I was speaking to the audience a few times. Um, but the first half was an hour, and usually you do two forty-five minute sets. So the first half was longer than expected. That was quite good. The second set was fifty-five minutes. Um, which included a, an encore at the end. So, um, so yeah, so I played for two and a quarter hours, which for me is a, that's a long old time and it's only me. So it's not like I've got other bandmates to rely on. So my, I would say at this point, I'm playing the best I've ever played. My lips felt the strongest. My proficiency is the best I've probably ever played. My vibrato is tight and intentional. I can turn it on and off at will for short bursts or long bursts. Um, and when I'm not in practice, the vibrato is the first thing to go because you haven't got the you haven't got the tightness in your lips, you haven't got the the muscle retention or whatever. Um, and it just adds a different flavour to the sound, so I can use vibrato as a as a another tool to express myself. So um, that was good. The improv itself, as I say, I improvise everything I do. So I improvise the whole gig. Um, I've got a separate video I'm going to make on how to improvise a whole gig because there's a bunch of points that go into that. So I'm not going to dive into that too much deep, too much now. Um, Pedals worked really well. Um, I used the uh, I used the the mini what's it called the mini universe Envave um, reverb pedal pretty much throughout the entire gig. Uh, we've done an episode of that on the distorted trumpet show, so you can watch about that there if you want. Um, I use my echo verb reverb and delay pedal for the delay so i turn that on and off quite a lot and then i use the wah pedal and that was quite cool people are still um shocked when they see a trumpet player playing on a wah pedal even though there's tons of trumpet players in the world and in history who have played through wahs but i live in rural southwest france there's not many trumpet players here full stop there's even less trumpet players that play with a, a guitar wah pedal and delay and reverb and stuff like this. Um, so it's quite cool because it stands me out and people are starting to, to realise that it's me, which is nice. Um, and there's some techniques that I can do with the wah, which I'll probably do, demonstrate in another video. Um, but for trumpet geeks out there, it's, it's basically double tonguing while you're doing the wah at the same time. Um, and if you've got some delay, you can kind of send it off into the distance at the same time. So using that in the middle of some tracks is quite effective. Um, I haven't got a clip of me doing it, so I can't put it up now, but I'll, I'll do another video on that. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's, that's probably it on the what went well side. On the not so well side... really not very much like i came up with a very very short list of what to improve um i think the backing tracks could have been louder 
uh, in some places. When I watch the videos back, you can't really hear the backing track. Um, I could hear it, but I think people elsewhere in the bar could hear it, but it could have been a little bit louder without still getting in the way. One of the things that I did was I had my focus right, my audio interface, so I was kind of altering the volume with that, but it's turning up sideways and it's a bit fiddly. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to use this nano control. Um, so I'll get this paired up with Ableton and then I can use the slidey, uh, the slidey knobs here to, to affect the volume in real time. And the form factor of this, just going up and down like this, it's more delicate, it's more easy to do. So this will just live on my desk with my laptop there and my launch pad here. And, and it, it's easy for me to switch to playing one handed and just, you know, just turn the volume up a little bit on that. So I've already tested that out and it works really well. So that's that's the next improvement I'm going to make, which is already already there. And I don't need to buy any more gear. So that's even better. Save money. Um, <laughs> there was a, another physical thing as well, which was quite funny. So on my pedal board, I've got my Exaverb, my reverb and delay pedal right next to my fuzz pedal. Um, the fuzz pedal was a bit close and the shoes that I had were quite wide and so I kept catching the fuzz when I was <laughs> when I was trying to turn the, the reverb and delay pedal on um, so that was a bit fiddly so I kept having to like alter my feet and prat around with that so I've moved the fuzz pedal a little bit to the right on my pedal board and um, I'm not going to wear those shoes on gigs again, <laughs> again. Um, it's a tiny point, but it makes a difference. You don't want to accidentally turn a fuzz pedal on in the middle of some slow melodic jazz piece when you're trying to create some nice, beautiful ambient delay, and then all of a sudden you just get like a, a huge distorted crunch. It's, it's not a good look. So thankfully I didn't pull that thing on the gig, but um, so I want to prevent that. And that was it. I have no other bad points for it. Noth nothing else that I want to improve. Um, so that's... I think all that I want to say today. This was a bit of a ramble. This was a bit of a brain dump. Um, if you're a musician and you're looking at doing gigs, this might be of interest to you. Um, as I say, I've got more videos that I'm going to be doing on some of these things because I want to I want to capture the, the points as well while, I, while they're fresh in my head. Um, and maybe they're going to be of interest to somebody as well. You don't know. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, thanks for watching, if you're still with us this far, uh, and I will see you soon. All right, bye.